Hey audio friends, Graham here from the recordingrevolution.com and I want to do a video in response to a big question I got from my Jakir King interview a couple weeks ago. This video is going to help you get the low end in your mix sitting beautifully. And this is a trick that again I learned from Jakir about a year ago. He brought it up in the interview specifically and I got him to unpack it a little bit. And I know for some of you there was a lot of questions about what did that actually look like? He was talking about leveling things and mentioning certain uh, meters and people were getting confused about what type of metering he was talking about. So real quick, this trick is is beautiful in the sense that it helps you balance the bottom end of your kick drum to your low end instrument, bass guitar, bass synth, whatever, so that they sit beautifully together. And it also helps you get the low end right in your mix no matter where you're mixing, especially if you're mixing in an environment where you're unfamiliar with what the low end really is giving you. Maybe your room gives you too much low end, and so you're afraid that you're going to not mix enough into your mixes. Or the opposite. Maybe you've put too much bass trapping, and now you've absorbed too much low end in your, your room, so you overmix the bass. This little trick will help you get the right balance. And I've only been doing this about a month or so, and it's it's uncanny how it works. So it was really, really simple. Let me show you how to do what Jakir King was talking about. Again, not my trick, but I wanted to show it to you. What you're going to need is a simple VU meter. Okay. Now, he was using the VU meter built into his tape emulation plugin, and you can do that too. I've done that also. It could be any tape emulation plugin. A lot of times they have a VU meter. Today, I'm just pulling up the, the Voomt Duo uh, VU meter from Klangheim. Um, uh, Clang Helm, excuse me. And this is like a $10 plug-in. I've had this for years for mastering. And all it is is a VU meter, which allows you to measure average volume, RMS volume, um, which is helpful in a digital workstation where you have just peak volume meters. Okay, so your DAW may have something like this included. If you have a plug-in with VU meters, and just use that. There's free ones out there, I'm sure. This one I've just had for years, and it's just it's all it does. Okay, so one thing we have to point out real quick, and I'll show you the trick, is that zero on this VU meter is not the same as zero, aka the top, of your master fader. Okay, I have addressed this before many times because this is huge, a big misunderstanding in digital audio. So when Jakir King was talking about his trick with minus three and getting it to max, max out at zero dB, people are like, what is he talking about? Is he talking about clipping your mix bus? No, he's looking at a VU meter because zero on this VU meter is actually negative 18 RMS, okay? Average volume, which is way down here. It'd be like having the average volume peak right around here on your master fader. Very different, okay? So here's the trick. When you got your mix set up and you're ready to start doing a balance, what Jakir likes to do is balance the kick drum and the bass guitar first and then build the mix around that. And so what he does is he basically pulls the fader of everything else down or mutes everything else and puts a VU meter on his mix bus, his master fader. And then he starts to do some balancing. And what he'll do is uh, he'll solo the kick drum. In this case, I've got a kick in, a kick out, and a kick sample all blended together. So there's one fader here called kicks. And if I press play, you can hear it. Okay, and what he likes to do is set his kick fader all the way up at zero. So he has, that's like a baseline for him. He puts the kick fader all the way at zero, unity gain. And then what he's looking for on this VU meter is when the kicks are hitting, he's trying to get the, the needle to hit minus three on the VU meter. Now, minus three does not matter. It could be minus 10, it could be minus 12, it could be anything. But I'm going to show you why minus three is an easier number to remember and how this, again, doesn't matter about your overall level. It's a, it's a relative level. So he pressed play. Now, at this volume, you can see my kick drum is just it's pretty quiet. Um, so what I'm going to do is just gain up the input of this plugin so I can get the kick drum to hit minus three. Now don't scream at me yet. I'm going to turn this back down later. I'm just simply turning it up for a minute so I can meter it easier at minus three. I want to basically trim in the plugin so that every time the kick drum hits with its fader set perfectly at zero, I want it to basically be hitting minus three.
Okay, give or take, the kick drum is now hitting minus three on the VU meter. Okay, again, I've turned up the kick, but I'm gonna turn it back down. This is just to get this relative to the bass guitar. Now I'm gonna bring in the bass. Now the thing here that he's trying to do is, when you bring in the bass, if the kick drum is kissing the needle so that every time the kick drum hits by itself, it's hitting minus three on the VU meter, his goal is to bring in the bass guitar or bass synth element and add it to the kick drum so that together, when the kick and the bass are hitting together, they hit zero on this VU meter. Together. So the kick by itself, minus three, kick and bass together, zero. Why? His explanation was brilliant that if you basically take the kick drum and you did a copy of the kick drum, so there's two of the exact same kick drums, it should increase the level of that kick drum by 3 dB average, okay? So in essence, by bringing in the bass guitar alongside the kick drum, if you can get the two together to hit zero versus minus three, you've in essence just doubled the volume of the kick drum. You've got a balance where the bass volume is very similar to the kick drum volume. They're balanced against each other. That's the logic. You can go watch Shakir's video to hear his explanation, but this is what it looks like in practice. I'm gonna solo the bass guitar. And again, the kick drum is gonna be kissing minus three, and as I bring in the bass guitar, I'm gonna see if I can get the two of them to kiss zero. You see how that was working? When the, the bass is just playing, it's not zero. But when the kick hits at the same time that the bass is playing, I was getting the needle to kiss zero. So basically added 3 dB of average volume of the two together. So here's just the kick drum. Add the bass. That's where he would set the bass then. The kick is set, the bass is set. Now I'm gonna turn this back to zero. So take the gain back out. So now the kick is back to the real volume that it was. And together you can sort of see where they are in my master fader. Right, so you can see the volume is it's really low. It's not that I'm turning the bass super high or the kick super high, but what I've done is created a balance from the kick and the bass. So then now what Jakir was talking about is you would then bring in the rest of the band and leave your bass and leave your kick drum level where they are, knowing that your low end is matched to the kick and the bass, so then you can just bring in the rest of the band. And this is just the these are where the faders were at some point. <laughs> And now you go ahead and do the rest of your mix the normal way you'd mix, knowing that your low end is matched and it will should not be too much low end or not enough low end. It's balanced to each other, the kick and the bass, and you should build the rest of the mix around that. So try it out, the low end mix trick. I learned it from Jakir, uh, and it's, it's so simple. It will help you at least set that low end level so that you're not getting too much or too little as you move forward with the rest of your mix. Leave me a comment below this video. Let me know if that made any more sense to you. If you've tried it, if you haven't, go try it. You gotta kinda do it to understand what he's talking about. Leave me a comment, let me know if you've done this, and if it's helping you get your low end to translate better outside of your studio. That's kind of the key here, is you can trust the level of the low end a little bit better with the metering here, uh, no matter what your room or your headphones or your speakers are giving you. Thanks for watching. Again, Graham here from therecordingrevolution.com. Subscribe to these videos if you find them helpful. If you like this kind of content, join the email list. I'll send you a free video series called The Smart Start to Mixing, which will really set you up for better sounding mixes with the same plugins, same gear you have, and a bunch of other exclusive bonus content for free that I send just to my email list. Otherwise, have a great week. We will see you on another video real soon.